Hey there photographers, today we're diving into the incredible story behind one of the most iconic photographs in the world, Steve McCurry's Afghan Girl. You see, understanding the depth of this image goes way beyond the lens. It's about Steve McCurry, the guy behind the camera, and what drove him to capture this unforgettable moment. McCurry was no ordinary photographer, he was a storyteller with a camera, someone who had this uncanny knack for capturing the essence of human stories. His career spanned decades, taking him to the far corners of our world. He documented the resilience of people facing adversity in conflict zones and crisis regions. But when he stumbled upon Sharbat Gula, the Afghan girl, in a refugee camp during the Soviet-Afghan War in 1984, something profound was brewing in his mind. You see, Afghanistan was torn apart by war back then, with millions forced from their homes. McCurry's mission? To put a human face on this struggle. He wasn't just chasing a stunning photo, he was chasing empathy and understanding from people worldwide. He wanted us to feel the weight of their struggle. And that weight? It came in the form of a gaze from a young woman. Charbat Gula's gaze speaks volumes, not just about her own experiences, but about the pain and resilience of her entire people during those turbulent times. This image is a voice for the voiceless, a face for the faceless, and a reminder that a single click of a camera can change the world. Now let's peek behind the curtain at the camera and lens details. Ever wondered how we nailed that iconic shot? Well, it's not just about clicking a button. McCurry's choice of gear was no accident. He knew that the right camera and lens could make all the difference. He went with a trusty Nikon FM2, a manual 35mm film camera known for its reliability. Why is that a big deal? Well, it gave him full control over the exposure settings. And trust me, that's a big deal when you're shooting in less than ideal conditions. But the magic didn't stop there. McCurry paired it with a 105mm f2.5 lens. This lens is a gem for portrait photography. The 105mm focal length lets you keep a comfortable distance from the subject, which is especially important when you're shooting in sensitive situations. Oftentimes, in portrait photography, you have a choice between a shorter focal length or a longer focal length. Shorter focal lengths can get you closer to your subject and allow you to gain more rapport with the subject, but it can make the subject feel uncomfortable, especially if they aren't used to having their photo taken. But with that being said, I believe the longer focal length was ideal in order to capture a more candid looking portrait. And check this out, the wide aperture of f2.5. It gave him that dreamy, blurred background while keeping our Afghan girl sharp and in focus. Those piercing eyes, that haunting beauty, they're emphasized because of that lens and aperture combo. So it's not just a click, it's a carefully thought out symphony of equipment and technique that makes this image unforgettable. Now, I bet you're curious about the camera settings behind this shot. While the exact settings remain a bit of a mystery, we can make some educated guesses based on the circumstances. Ready for some detective work? Let's start with the aperture, also known as the f-stop. Given how those piercing eyes and that mesmerizing face take center stage while the background melts away, it's a safe bet that McCurry dialed in a wide aperture. We're talking about something in the range of f2.5 because that was the maximum aperture of the lens he used. This created a dreamy, out of focus background that drew all our attention straight to her features. Next up, the shutter speed. To keep things sharp and blur free, especially when you're working with a wide aperture, you need a quick shutter. It's like freezing a moment in time. I'm thinking McCurry went with a shutter speed of around 1 1 25th to 1 250th of a second. Quick enough to catch the magic, but not so quick that it feels like an action shot. McCurry also had a great shooting style where he was very stabilized, so he didn't really need the help of a tripod because he was very sure not to move his body to introduce camera shake into the photo. ISO, that's all about sensitivity to light. Depending on the light conditions in that refugee camp, McCurry might have had to get a bit creative. A low ISO is usually preferred for quality, but that means more light is needed. Alright, now let's dissect what makes Steve McCurry's Afghan Girl photograph a true masterpiece in storytelling through visuals. Let's zoom in and see how every element in this frame works its magic. First, we've got the girl's face smack in the center of the frame. It's like a magnet for your eyes, pulling you right in. The central positioning doesn't just focus your gaze, it connects you with her on a deeper level. You're not just a viewer, you're a participant. But there's a cool twist here. Now let's talk about that fabric. It's not just a backdrop, it's a frame. It adds layers, texture, and a dash of mystery to the picture. See, it's not just about the girl, it's about the story behind her. The fabric guides your eyes to her face, like an invisible arrow. Plus, it gives you a glimpse into the culture and traditional clothing of the region. It's all about authenticity and storytelling. Alright, now let's dive into the magical world of lighting in Steve McCurry's iconic Afghan girl portrait. Trust me, it's more than just lights, camera, action. McCurry works some serious magic with that natural light. First things first, he didn't bring in fancy studio lights. He used what he had, natural light. It's like mother nature's spotlight. This soft, gentle light you see, it's like a gift from the sky, probably filtering through a nearby tent or opening in that refugee camp. 
And here's the cool part. It's soft and gentle on the girl's face. No harsh shadows, no stark highlights. It's like a soft, warm hug of light. But here's the real kicker. Those little sparkles in her eyes, they're called catch lights. They're like tiny diamonds that breathe life into her gaze. They make her eyes captivating. They're like talking to your soul. It's not just a picture, it's a connection. But the lighting isn't just about the girl. It sets the mood and the vibe. It tells you the story of that refugee camp. The hardships, the resilience, the vulnerability. McCurry's a master at using natural light. He didn't just capture a photo, he captured a feeling, an experience, a connection. Lastly, remember, if you want to replicate this enchanting lighting, it all comes down to embracing soft lighting, the art of diffusion, and the magic of natural light. Now let's talk about the editing. What's so special about it? Well, the limited post-processing is a big deal. McCurry's magic didn't involve hours of digital touch-ups. It was all about capturing the real, raw moment. And here's why it matters. You see, back in the 1980s, digital wizardry wasn't a thing. They had film photography, and post-processing was kind of like a slow dance in the darkroom. McCurry, like other film photographers, aimed to get it right in camera. There wasn't much room for post-processing back then. And here's the thing. This minimal post-processing makes the Afghan girl photo timeless. It's like a time capsule, unaltered and real. And here's the main point. The Afghan girl is like a beacon for aspiring photographers. It says, hey, you don't need all those fancy tools to make an impact. Focus on your craft. Now let's dive into the color behind the photo. Trust me, those colors are more than just eye candy. They tell a story. In the sea of green, there's a splash of red. It's like a warm hug in the photo, and it's not there by accident. Red and green, they're like best friends on the color wheel. They're what we call complementary colors. Oh, and don't miss her skin tone. It's like a hidden gem. Amid all the colors, it's warm and real. It's the heartbeat of the picture. Now let's talk emotions. Green, the boss color here, stands for life and growth. It's like nature's promise. And those green eyes, they're like a mystery waiting to be unraveled. McCurry's genius, he balanced these colors like a pro. Green, red, earthy tones, they all dance together in perfect harmony. It's like music for your eyes. Now let's talk about the marketing and impact behind this photo. This image didn't just make waves, it created a tsunami of influence. Let's break it down. Back in June 1985, Afghan Girl rocked the world as the cover star of National Geographic. At that time, many folks didn't even know about the Afghan refugee crisis. But this picture? It was like a sledgehammer to our collective consciousness. It wasn't just about one girl, it became a symbol of the human struggle in conflict zones. Those eyes, that determined look, they spoke a universal language that tugged at our hearts. People felt a deep connection and a strong urge to act. And let's not forget about the man behind the lens. McCurry's star shot up like a rocket. Afghan girls showcased the power of photojournalism to inspire, inform, and ignite action. It showed the world that a single image could change it. And here's the thing, the story didn't end in 1985. Afghan girl is still making waves today. The image pops up in all sorts of media, exhibitions, and publications. It's like a beacon, reminding us of the strength and resilience of refugees. But it's not just a pretty picture. Afghan girl has become an educational tool and an advocate's best friend. It's a source of inspiration for organizations and individuals fighting for refugee rights and other global causes. For all you budding photographers and storytellers out there, remember this, a single photo can move mountains. Afghan Girl is proof that your lens can raise awareness, spark thoughts, and change the world. Here are some important takeaways. Aspiring photographers can draw several valuable lessons from this iconic shot. The significance of authentic, minimal post-processing, the art of capturing the human experience with minimal equipment, the magic of soft, natural lighting, and the ability of a well-composed photograph to evoke emotion and spark change. On the technical side, we have the technique of wide aperture for background blur, using soft, natural light, the use of complementary colors and your understanding of color theory, and the basics of composition, such as the rule of thirds and framing. For further reading to learn more about the techniques and definitions used in this photo, I listed them in the description box down below. And there you have it, the incredible journey of Steve McCurry's Afghan Girl, a photograph that turned a lens into a megaphone for change. From that haunting gaze on the cover of National Geographic to its enduring influence on the world stage, this image proves that a picture is indeed worth a thousand words. It's a reminder that photography isn't just about capturing moments, it's about capturing hearts and minds. So whether you're an aspiring photographer, a storyteller, or simply someone who appreciates the power of a well-timed click, remember the story of Afghan Girl. It's a beacon of hope that every frame you capture has the potential to change the world. Thanks for watching.